Number eight, what net charge would you place on a 100 gram piece of sulfur if you put an extra electron on one in 10, what's that, trillion uh, of its atoms? All right, so first thing is we have to find the number of atoms that there are of sulfur in a 100 gram piece. So 100 grams, this is back to chemistry. So 100 grams, we've got grams on the bottom, we got to first convert to moles, all right? So the atomic mass, they told us, was 32.1. So that means that there's 32.1 grams of sulfur in one mole of sulfur. And remember, a mole is just a collection of particles. And in this case, since we're talking about a singular atom, uh, we are talking about then atoms, okay? When we talk about moles, we're relating the quantities instead of like molecule, because we're not dealing with a molecule. So every one mole will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur, all right? So it's, I think of Avogadro's number here like a dozen, right? Every one dozen has 12 items in it. The, literally the same concept, it's just the number is tremendously large, so it's a little harder to comprehend, but it's the same idea. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd multiplied by 100 and then divide that by 32.1, and we get a value of about 1.8, so I'm just going to do 1.875 times 10 to the 24th atoms atoms of sulfur right okay then it tells us so this is how many atoms we have then it goes and tells us now that we're going to place an extra electron in one on one atom out of every 10 to the 12th of them so basically what we can do now is we can take this number right and then divide it by 10 to the 12th and that would tell us then the number of extra electrons, right? You know, think about it this way. Pretend you had, pretend you have, you know, five items. Uh, let me do six. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four. Actually, let, let me pretend that these are atoms instead of charges. Sorry about that. Pretend you have one, two. That's a box. One, two, three, four. Okay. Five, okay, six. There we go. All right. Pretend you got six things in here. And I say, I'm going to put a positive charge uh, on one of every three of them, or, or one in three, right? So if I put a positive charge on each one in three, then I'm going to put a positive charge, let's say, on this guy over here, and I'm going to put a charge on this guy over here, right? So how many electrons did I place? Two, right? Two. The way you could have solved that, though, without, you know, doing a picture like this would have been to say, hey, I got a total number of atoms here, which was six. And you told me that there's going to be, I'm going to place a positive charge on one of every three of them. So I'm going to divide that by three and I'm going to get two. So I place two electrons or protons. I've talked about protons, so specifically protons. But look, there's two, right? So it's the same idea. Okay, same thing here. It's just the numbers are bigger. But whenever you get... You know, this is an important problem solving strategy. Whenever you get like crazy old numbers here and the constant, you know, the numbers are big and it, it just becomes more confusing. You want to try to create a similar problem for yourself, but on an easier scale. Anyone can figure this out, right? And that's the beauty of this, that almost everyone here, probably everyone has the intuition of how to do this problem. But the numbers are the scary part, okay? But if you notice... It's no different than this problem over here, and everyone can do that. So the strategy is, or the trick is, to try to sometimes when, you, when you're faced with a problem, create a similar problem for yourself that's much simplified. I can't tell you how many times this has helped me, not only through school, because school's great, but just generally, all right, in, in other more, you know, I don't want to say more important issues in life, but in more important issues, all right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway. Enough of the enough of the lesson there. Let's get back to physics and chemistry, kind of. So we're going to take this value and divide it then by we're going to divide this value by ten to the twelfth to find the the number of excess electrons or the number of extra electrons that we place. So divide that by ten raised to the twelfth, and now we're going to get a value here of about one point eight seven five times 10 to the 12th. Oh, yeah, that was silly. I wasn't even looking at the numbers. You're just going to, that's just half of that. So you just minus, yeah, minus it by 10 to the 12th. Um, and that's going to be then uh, number of electrons now, right? This represents the number 
of electrons. So if I know the number of electrons, do I know the charge that this number of excess electrons will now create? And yes, we do, right? Because we know the conversion value. So we have this many electrons and we know that each single electron, for every one electron, there will be a negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs of charge associated with that single electron. So notice the units cancel here. And now when I take that value and I multiply it by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, I get a value about basically exactly negative three almost, right? So negative 3.00 times 10 to the negative seven uh, coulombs of charge, okay? Now, if you wanted that in micro coulombs, by all means, divide, you know, basically uh, multiply that by 10 to the sixth, and you can get that, right? If you wanted nano coulombs, you could do that too. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. If, we, if you took anything away from this video or anything that we've been doing so far, hopefully you have. It'd be a great way to give us a hand, all right? Subscribe, tell your friends, hit the like button. All right, and it's all free to do that, which is even better. All right, I appreciate it. Take care.